Ladies and gentlemen, I now invite His Royal Highness the Duke of Cambridge to the podium to make some remarks. Tonishta Aguini Ushla. Catherine and I are delighted to be here at the Museum of Literature Ireland and are hugely grateful to the Tornishta for the very generous welcome. It goes without saying that the relationship between the UK and Ireland is of vital importance. And that is why I'm so pleased that Catherine and I are undertaking our first official visit here. Growing up, I remember seeing the troubles that took place, which affected so many people across the UK and Ireland. This explains why one of the truly profound moments for Catherine and me took place yesterday at the Garden of Remembrance. It was a reminder of the complexity of our shared history, and that, as my grandmother said during her visit in 2011, our islands have experienced more than their fair share of heartache and turbulence. But it was also a reminder about how far we have come. It is right that we continue to remember those who suffered as a consequence of our troubled past. And whilst many wrongs have been done, it is important that we are not bound by these. Today, our relationship goes far beyond two countries that are simply neighbors. We are firm friends and equal partners, as my grandmother put it. The links between our people, businesses, and our culture are inextricable, and we should all be proud to see how strong those bonds are. As we look ahead to some changes in our relationship, we must never forget how far we have come together in recent decades in transforming the relationships across our two islands. Many people deserve our deepest gratitude for their hard work, imagination, and above all, courage in bringing about these profound changes. It is vital that people of my generation and generations to come never take for granted the progress we have made together. We must recommit ourselves to the path of friendship and understanding. Of course, the changing relationship between the UK and the EU will require us to work together to ensure that the relationship between Ireland and the UK remains just as strong. Over the past two days, Catherine and I have seen for ourselves why Ireland is a country looked upon with such envy. As we stood on the cliffs at Hoth and looked across the Irish Sea, a mere 50 miles to the British coastline, it was easy to see why so many people find the lure of this beautiful country so difficult to resist. And beyond the breathtaking landscapes, we have received such wonderful hospitality and friendship from all those we have met. And this morning, we were privileged to meet a group of remarkable people who are working to improve the lives of those who are less fortunate. Their commitment and their desire to help is truly inspirational. And we're looking forward to seeing the wonders that the West Coast has to offer when we travel there tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, legal treaties are vital in underpinning the relationships between states. But relationships between people are equally, if not more, essential, especially between the people of our two countries, whose lives, histories, and futures are so deeply intertwined. I am confident that friendship, understanding, and a shared vision for a peaceful and prosperous future will ensure that the unique and precious bond between our people is not broken. My family is determined to continue playing our part in protecting, preserving, and strengthening that bond. So tonight, we celebrate our commitment to working together, a commitment that I firmly believe will support our relationship in going from strength to strength. Ladies and gentlemen, may I offer a toast to the President of Ireland and to the people of this wonderful country in thanks for the warmth of your welcome on what I hope will be the first of many visits for us. Gurev Mila Maragwiv Gulea.
Thank you for those remarks. Exactly 100 years after James Joyce marched across Stephen's Green, the Irish poet Seamus Heaney put down his pen having completed his translation of Beowulf. He took the image of an old planked settle bed as a metaphor for his task, taking an important inheritance and revitalizing it for the future. And now this is an inheritance, upright, rudimentary, unshiftably planked in the long ago, yet willable forward again and again and again. It's a metaphor for the work too that you've just described. As the Thonis had just said, we are fortunate in Ireland to have a superbly talented young generation of emerging creative artists, some of them with us tonight. I want to introduce one. Her first album, Bath Time, released last November and nominated for the Choice Album of the Year has been described in the Sunday Times as quietly breathtaking, the arrival of a unique voice. Please welcome Maya Sophia, who hails from County Galway and is joined tonight by Maeve McKenna on harp and Kira Tracy on violin. Thank mm -hmm. you. 